Um, you look great, by the way, boss. Get out of here. You look well rested. God. You look well. You're an idiot. I missed you. You know, this whole drive down, I was hearing your voice and thinking, man, I can't wait till I get home and I can be right there again with the boss man yeah. doing this show. I love this show, talking about Raw. And I went to the about. gym the other day and some bloke goes, wow, you look much younger in person. I said, oh, thank you. <laughs> the camera adds it. 10 pounds in years. Okay, now, now would you shut up so I can talk about Raw? Got it. I would like to say that uh, the show had its ups and downs. But one thing that is abundantly clear is that uh, this show needs to be two hours. And I'm pretty sure if you asked Triple H off the record, he'd tell you he'd be much happier two hours. Because, my God, do they have to fill time on this show. So we open with The Usos and Solo Sokoa coming out. And, by the way, um, Jey Uso's broken wrist has just magically healed. No mention of it. I mean, it's taped up, but they're making no—it's just like nothing. No comment whatsoever about his wrist. So they start talking about facing the New Day on Friday. Then the New Day shows up. And, hey, listen, if you're invested in this storyline, both teams did really good promos about why they want to win on Friday. Both teams want the record. So from that perspective, it was good. But, God, they went on for hours. And then this Matt Riddle comes out with bongo drums. And both teams look at him like, what are you doing here? And he does some stupid bong jokes and such. And then finally, after an eternity, he goes, man, you know, we should have a six man. We got six six dudes here. So they have a six man, which then goes 20 minutes. And I don't want to hear one person go, oh, Brian doesn't like long matches now. Bro, this match did not need 20 minutes. Do you guys understand anything about anything? It's not about whether the matches are long or whether the matches are short, okay? It's the matches need to be as long as they need to be. Sometimes that's long. Sometimes that's short. This match did not, in any universe, need to be 21 minutes long. They got the heat on Kofi forever. Then they got the heat on Xavier forever. And then they do some stuff at the end, and stuff at the end was cool. And then finally, uh, Solo Sokoa pins Matt Riddle. Because they didn't want to beat either of the teams that are fighting for the record on Friday. So Matt Riddle did the job here. Good last few minutes, but this segment went like 40 minutes from start to finish. JBL came out, and he buried the crowd. Guy's a good talker, but if you want to see this bloke bury the crowd, I got the show for you. And then Baron Baron Corbin comes out, and he beats Cedric Alexander in two minutes. Later... Austin Theory beat Shelton Benjamin in two minutes. And regardless of how they're doing it, the the fact of the matter is, I think this is leading to the Hurt Business being reunited. So if you're a fan of the Hurt Business, I think you're going to get them back. With the idea that Cedric and Shelton are useless alone, but as a unit, they're killers. Seth Rollins came out. Seth Rollins is now 100% babyface. They sing his song. He puts over the fans. He wrestles the heels. I mean, it was not an aberration last week. He is a babyface now. So he issues an open challenge. So Finn Balor comes out with the Judgment Day. But then they're interrupted by AJ, Gallows, and Anderson. And Seth Rollins is just like, I don't want any part of this. And he leaves. Just vanishes. And so... The other blokes are in the ring, and, you know, a big brawl. Well, actually, first, you know, Styles says, and, I, you know, it was obvious this was going to happen. They've been building this up for weeks. He goes, you know, we finally found a solution to this Rhea Ripley problem. And here she is. And it's Mia Yim. So Mia Yim is returned. She attacks Rhea Ripley. Giant brawl breaks out, and uh, the baby faces clear the ring. Mia Yim is now part of the OC, and we'll have all sorts of matches with the OC versus uh, the uh, Judgment Day with now uh, one woman on each side. So they go backstage, and, you know, Rollins is dancing around, and Kathy Kelly goes, are you going to do this open challenge or not? He goes, I promise these fans, these great fans, tonight I will do the U.S. title open challenge. And she laughs. Ah! So he's a babyface which is uh, a a gigantic improvement over uh, what he was doing before. 
Otis B. Elias, man, shave that beard, buddy. He was doing a lot better as uh, Ezekiel. Oh, come on. No, he's doing way better. Oh, he was way on. better as Ezekiel. Dude. It's Elias. Nothing match. Otis pins him. World's strongest slam. Nothing to this guy. Nothing. Why did they bring him back? Well, I mean, he, for this, like, I mean, honestly, for this, why did they not build him up for a while? Bring back the guitar. Bring at least. You know what he is in the ring, so why did you not bring him back with the most fanfare that you could get to rally people around him and just then let it atrophy? Well, I mean, this, they built him up, they half blew him up, and then just completely let the thing disintegrate. If you've paid any attention to this show of late, there were a lot of guys that Vince liked and didn't like, and old Triple H disagreed. But he couldn't say anything to Vince. It's just like, yes, Vince. Yes, Dad. And uh, now Vince is gone. And I don't think that old Triple H is necessarily the biggest fan of old Elias. And uh, I'm not saying, and I know people are going to But wasn't it hearing during his term that they were bringing him back? I mean, I thought it was under Triple H that Ezekiel was gone and Elias was coming back. I, I don't, I'm not sure. It was a long time ago. Because he had to brought his full beard. I mean, I don't know which... Uh, but one way or the other... Hmm. Uh, he don't. I don't think he sees a lot in this guy. That's what it looked like to me on this show. So then Bianca, Asuka, and Alexa came out, and then Damage Control came out, and uh, the highlight was a promo battle between Asuka and Io, all in Japanese. And then uh, afterwards, there was a challenge for War Games, and boy, did this fan, this these, this crowd did not care about War Games. They were like, "Cool, a match on a show we're not at." Hmm. And he just kind of sat there. And then Nikki Cross attacked Bianca. And so she'll be on the uh, damage control team. And the baby faces are going to need another woman. And we'll see who that ends up being. Austin Theory is noted beat Shelton Benjamin. Then we had this Ms. Johnny Gargano segment. And this was another one, dude. The show needs to be two hours. So Gargano comes out and... Uh... This is settle in. God. <laughs> So Miz, Miz allegedly went to eat with a Hollywood exec. And Johnny Gargano comes out and he says, you know, that uh, that exec was not an exec. It wasn't a movie producer. It was a private investigator. And she filmed you without your knowledge. And I'm going to show that film here against your will on national television. And he shows the video, which is Miz admitting that everything that Johnny Gargano said last week was true. He hired Dexter Loomis when Dexter Loomis was unemployed and painting on the streets. He hired him to pretend to stalk him so that Miz would seem like a bigger deal. But then he stopped paying him. And then the guy really started to stalk him. And then the big hole in the story is, oh, why don't you just pay the guy off and be done with it? But instead, uh, he's cheap. He's a cheap, rich guy. And now he's really being stalked. And this is patently illegal. And Corey Graves brings up that it's patently illegal. But they did it. And then this leads to a match. And as God is my witness, this match went 16 minutes. Johnny Gargano in The Miz. Johnny Gargano could work no miracles. It was a long match. And then finally, Miz is outside... Miz pretends to get dragged under the ring. He goes, my God, Dexter. The ref goes to look under the ring. And as the ref is distracted, Miz gets that turnbuckle. He goes, bam. And he hits Gargano in the neck. And he pins him. And as a man who is a huge fan of Johnny Gargano and has never been a big fan of the Miz, I was rooting for Miz the whole time. This, this little Johnny Gargano twerp, he deserved it. He deserved everything he got here. So Miz beats him, and then Loomis shows up to attack the Miz. A security comes out. Loomis flees through the crowd. Bro, they're trying to do stories here, okay? And whatever you think about the stories, the one, and I'm not defending this, don't get me wrong, but I will say, the one thing better is that when Vince was trying to do stories, he'd forget everything a week later, and, like, all these stories would begin, and they wouldn't end, or stories would randomly end that didn't have a beginning. Whatever you think about this stupid story, and it's stupid, at least there's been a beginning and a middle, and I presume we're going to have an end. 
So that, that to me, it's like an improvement. Like, it still sucks, but it's an improvement over the old stuff that sucks. Now, with that said, we got two problems here. Why isn't Miz paying this guy, number one? And number two, didn't they have a match? They were going to have a match where if Loomis won, he got a contract. Miz beat him up, and they never had the match. Hello? What's the follow-up there? I presume, I actually presume this, that we're going to get it next week. But we'll see. I just want there to be a postscript which says, after all of this story, Dexter Loomis was sent back to NXT, and he took Elias with him, and then Braun Breaker and Carmelo went up. No, this is not like the egg storyline, everybody. That wasn't a storyline. There was a mystery egg. There was like a beginning. There was no middle. And no, there was no end. Now, Nikki Cross beat Dana Brooke. Nobody cared about the match. Nobody cared about the 24-7 title. Nikki won. They, they said she was a new 24-7 champion. And then in a backstage segment, which is the funniest segment you ever saw in your life, <laughs> she tries to throw it in a garbage can. She misses. Bailey cracks, and then uh, Dakota Kai is so distracted she runs into a wall. I love it. This had to be live. I love it. it you know what? If it wasn't, I laughed and I'm laughed. Happy they left it in. Yes. <laughs> so then uh, Rollins comes out for the open challenge. Ali shows up on the screen. He goes, "I'll do it." No one wants to see Ali, but then. Bobby Lashley shows up, and he kills Ali. Which and means Bobby Lashley, in my book, still a baby face. They had the funniest spot where he throws Ali over this box, and Ali goes, bonk, and he slides down the wall like a cartoon. He's dead. So then uh, Bobby Lashley comes out, but Lashley wants the title so bad that the match doesn't start, and he just beats this guy senseless. And they send out all the geeks to, uh, to get rid of Bobby Lashley. And his... Uh, as Rollins is there dead, out comes Austin Theory to cash in. And uh, he cashes in for the United States title. And uh, long story short, he, uh, he can't win. He finally hits his finish. Lashley pulls a ref out of the ring. Lashley kills Austin Theory. The referee wakes up. He starts counting Austin Theory out. Austin Theory slides in at 9 Immediately gets curb stomped and pinned, and Seth Rollins retains the title. Now, yes, he's a massive geek, everybody. He's a massive geek. But, like, this is one of those things where you can't win for losing. If Austin Theory would have cashed in and beat Seth Rollins, people would have been so furious with that. Instead, they did the right thing. They took this stupid briefcase off the guy. He's not going to beat Roman Reigns. He's useless with the briefcase. He goes in there, he cashes in, which, honest to God, in storyline, in storyline, he made the right call. You ain't beating a Roman. Try to win something. And he ends up getting beaten. He shouldn't be the U.S. champion right now anyway. Seth just turned babyface. So I had no problem with this. This was a huge positive. Everything about it was good. And Mike is furiously nodding. As I think deep down, all of you are as well. Talk more after the break. Observer Live. I totally forgot this story until just now. And it happened when I was a kid. And so I think there's a decent chance that it could have been like a dream. Yes. And so, like, I was chopping the tree. And uh, I just remember looking up. And all of a sudden, like, this was a weird thing. I remember I looked up and there were Ewoks in the tree. That's definitely a dream. And I saw it coming down. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I was like, I woke up later. This is the weird thing he says. Yeah, it is. Well, it is weird. weird about it. It is weird. There were Ewoks in the tree. Yeah. That's weird. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.